48 seconds. We'll give uh, everyone just a, another minute to get on. We've got uh, I show 9.59 Central Time. So we'll get started here within the minute. Well, I don't know about you, but that seemed like about 48 seconds, so we're going to go ahead and get rolling here. I do welcome you to the webinar today, and thank you for your time. I promise you it will be time well spent. The topic today is what I would consider to be the most underrated, underappreciated, underleveraged, under insert word here topic in all of home improvement marketing. This is something that has an opportunity to make a massive massive difference in your closing ratios and the amount of sales uh, that you get on the average ticket and overall increase your business by a significant amount. As you can see on the title slide, it does say lower sales resistance before the sales appointment. Keyword is before the sales appointment. Think about that for just a minute. Before the sales appointment so that your salesperson is received more as a welcome guest instead of the nuisance of a pest. Increased closing ratios per, per unit sales. We'll get into all of this as we go through the webinar today. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. We'll have a little bit of introductory administrative uh, talk and then we'll get into the heart of the matter. So let's first of all, whoa, not go that far. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors. We'll be hearing from a few of these here in just a moment. We'll be hearing from some of the others later on in the webinar today. Without these sponsors, there would be no webinar. So take a chance, if you can, after the webinar to uh, shoot a note via email to whoever the sponsor was that invited you to this webinar, uh, thanking them for their time and their generous financial contributions because we are all making zillions of dollars off of this. I'm just kidding. But uh, they do make it possible, and there is a little bit of cost involved, and they do uh, supply uh, most importantly, an audience. So thank you to these uh, fine sponsors. And like I said, we will be hearing from them here in just a moment. We are going to do some giveaways today like we traditionally do on these webinars. We've got, uh, let's see, three copies of Monopolize Your Marketplace, the hardback book. That's a $25 value. We'll be giving those away, a couple of them during the middle part of the webinar and then uh, again at the end of the webinar. But you do have to be on the webinar to be a winner and they will be picked randomly by uh, my assistant, Judy Schaefer, who we'll be hearing from in a little bit. We also will be giving away one of my Monopolize Your Marketplace Remodeling Contractor Marketing Boot Camp CD sets. There's 10 CDs in there. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. It's a $399 value, and uh, this is some really good stuff. We'll give this away at the end. <coughs> so we'll have four lucky winners, three book winners, and one CD set winners. We'll get to those as we go through the webinar. Now, before we get rolling here, we do want to hear from uh, a couple of our sponsors, and we will hear first from Window Depot USA, who we actually will not hear personally from because they couldn't make it to today's webinar, but I will give you an overview and an idea, Window Depot USA. I like to think of them like the DVR that is hooked up to your television. Here's what that means. If you have a television and all you have is over-the-air broadcast or cable TV, that's pretty good. You can watch what you want, but only when the television networks want you to watch. You have no ability to be flexible in when you watch. Remember when you first got your first DVR? If you don't have one, run out and get one right now. It completely, totally revolutionizes the way you watch TV. Now, this is not a commercial for TV. It's a commercial for a window company. Here's the point I'm trying to make. What Window Depot adds to the window experience for you as a dealer is as revolutionary and flexible and awesome is when you hook that DVR up to your television. They've got support, they've got price breaks, they've got marketing support that they offer to their dealers that is not available through any of the other window companies that I've done business with, that I've been aware of, and that I've been around, and that's been a lot. 
these guys do a lot of the things that you currently pay good money for for you for free because they're dedicated to your success. So you may want to check out Window Depot. You can find them at Window Depot USA on uh, Google. And let's also hear from All Weather Coatings. And I believe Rob did not make it either. Let me just do a quick check, just to double check. Sometimes he shows up in a different spot on the list. The list is long. Wow, we got a lot of people on the webinar today. Thank you for your participation. Uh, Rob Garrett is not here as well. We'll go ahead and just let you know that All Weather Coatings has I call it a paint product. They probably wouldn't want me to say paint, but the reality is it's a paint, but it's like a super paint that uh, has properties that allow it to stay on basically for a long, long time. You don't have to paint as much. It has uh, also thermal properties that allow it to insulate a home, and uh, it's, pretty un it's pretty amazing. This is something particularly those of you in colder climates or hotter climates need to look into. It's also considered to be one of the best add-on products for companies that are maybe selling windows and siding, something like that. This is something that you can sell additionally to your customers that uh, has nice profit margin and is a fantastic product that has a unique and competitive advantage. So look into this. We'll also hear from Qualified Remodeler, and we do have, um, we do have, well, who do we have on here? We have Rob Hesselbarth from uh, Qualified Remodeler Magazine, and I'm going to go ahead and unmute Rob. Rob, are you with me? Hi, Rich. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for actually being here. <laughs> and uh, why don't you tell me about Qualified Remodeler Magazine? Let everybody know what they can expect. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be a part of this webinar. I, uh, we support you, Rich, and, and what you do for the remodeling market. And thanks for everybody to everybody for attending today. Uh, Qualified Remodeler is the oldest and original uh, magazine in the remodeling market. And uh, we, like Rich, like to try to educate readers and uh, give them important information that can help them run their business better. So if you don't get Qualified Remodeler, you can go to qualifiedremodeler.com, which will take you to our portal, forresidentialpros.com, and you can subscribe. And I also want to let anybody know that if they're going to the remodeling show in Baltimore in a few weeks, and you're there Tuesday night, uh, you can go to our awards reception and if you have any questions about that, uh, you can send a note to editor at qrmagazine.com, editor at qrmagazine.com, and I can give you the details. Otherwise, again, thanks for being here today. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the time, Rich, and back to you. Okay, thanks, Rob. And, and by the way, how much is the subscription? It is zero. It is zero. free to oh, any free. qualified remodeler. Okay, let me put this uh, differently. If you don't subscribe, that's just dumb. So if you don't get this magazine, <laughs> go get it. And uh, it's also, it's extra good now because you've got, I, I heard you've got a great new uh, marketing columnist that's writing in the magazine now. Is that true? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really old guy. His name's Rich Harshaw, and, uh, <laughs> but, but he knows a lot of things, and it can really help you. So check it out. You can, you can also read it online as well if you just Google for Rich, Rich Harshaw Qualified Remodeler. Fantastic. And uh, actually, thanks, Rob. I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and mute you again. There's uh, actually an article that was written for the most recent issue that does cover this exact same topic of uh, prepositioning. So you may want to check that out in conjunction with what we're learning today. Now, let's take a quick poll. And then we're going to get started about prepositioning. Here's what I want to know about prepositioning. First of all, here's what I want to know. What would Meatloaf do for love? Anything? But he wouldn't do that. It's kind of a joke, but here we go. Uh, we're going to do a poll. Let me initiate poll number one. Poll number one, does your company currently engage in prepositioning? And I'm going to launch that. Go ahead and fill that out. Let's see how this works. I'm going to give you just a little bit of time, please. Oh, no is trending very high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, keep going. The results are very consistent with what I normally see in uh, seminars when I ask. In fact, it's eerily similar to what I see when I ask. Let's go ahead and I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. All righty. And I'm going to share the results of that poll. And here's what we found. 58% just flat out said, no, don't do it. 25%. <laughs> I always like to give people a chance to say, well, we, we're supposed to, and we know we're supposed to, but we really don't do it very well. That's a very common answer I get when I ask about uh, rehash also. But here's the key. 16% say, yeah, we do that. So it, and that's very standard. It's usually about 15% 
that actually do some sort of prepositioning. And here's the problem. A lot of you that even do do prepositioning uh, may not be doing it exceptionally well. So don't take that as a negative. Take it as an opportunity to learn some stuff here. That's why we're all here, to learn and to grow. So let's keep going. We'll come back to a couple more polls later. Here's what people say. And here's what you need to understand. If we take a very simplistic Forrest Gump type approach, there's only three ways to increase your business. Only three ways. And here's what they are. Number one, get more leads. Number two, close more of your leads. And number three, get more money from each sale. If you do those three things, you're going to grow your business. Now, what do you think everybody wants to focus on? Well, Forrest says, life is like a box of chocolates and growing a business is like this. Just give me more leads. Just give me more leads. Just give me more leads. This is where everybody wants to focus. And yes, it would be fantastic to have more leads. And that's something that we can certainly talk about. Uh, in fact, if you join me for next month's webinar, we're going to talk about advertising. We talked last month about, excuse me, not month, two months ago, we talked about uh, internet marketing and lead generation from that. But let's point something out to you that's very interesting, is that more leads doesn't even have to be part of your marketing equation to grow your business. We're going to talk about how to get more money out of the existing leads that you have today. And I want you to just think about that for a minute. Let's, it's so easy to let words and phrases just kind of glide over your head and not make an impact. Sit there and think about this for a minute. In fact, let's take a look. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you what I call an exponential growth chart. Okay? Now this is just hypothetical, so please kind of go with the flow here. Fill in your own numbers. I don't really care. I just want to make a point. Here's the point. If you have 100 leads per month and you're closing 30% of them, that's 30 new customers. And if your average sale is $7,000, what you've got is you've got yourself a nice little $2.5 million company or something like that, right? So it's a nice little company. This is a nice business. Well, what if we increase the conversion ratio from 30% to 38%? Now, here's what happens. We get 38 customers, and the total sales goes up to 266. Now, here's the, here's the important question for you. How is it possible to make your conversion ratio go up from 30% to 38%? And the first way that most people immediately default to is to say, well, let's get our salespeople better. And so they engage in sales training, and they hire the likes of Dave Yoho or Rodney Webb or others that are in the industry. And there's a lot of value in that. And I certainly want to encourage you to engage in sales training. I think it's a very important part of the equation. However, I'm going to assume for our purposes today that you are already doing sales training to the extent that you want to do it. Okay? It's out there. It's been out there forever. If you're not doing it, it's because you've chosen not to do it, and that's okay, or you do it internally, or however you do it, or you, <laughs> again, here's the point. You're already doing sales training. I want to talk about how to get it from the 30% that you get after doing sales training to the 38%, and you say, well, my numbers are 40%, or my numbers are 22%, or you don't understand. It doesn't matter. Here's what matters. Whatever your percent is, let's get it up, and we can do that with this prepositioning. Here's what comes next. If we take that 38% conversion ratio, and now instead of a $7,000 average ticket, we get $7,500, question for you. Is it possible to sell the same thing for more money? Is it possible to get $7,500 instead of $7,000? And everybody on the call already knows that the answer is yes, because you see good salespeople do it all the time. Take your best salesperson and your second, third, fourth, fifth, and line them up and see who sells for the most money. And obviously, better salesmen sell for more money. Is it possible that if your marketing was better, if your prepositioning was better, if what you said was better, if your identity was better, that you could sell for more money? And the answer is logically has to be, has to be, underline the word has to be, yeah. So how do we make it happen? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. But before we talk about it, take a look at these numbers. $285,000. How many more leads have we added? None. What have we done differently? Prepositioning and identity. We're going to talk about both of those, primarily about prepositioning, but a little bit about identity. Here's what we've done. We've taken a $210,000 a month business to a $285,000 business. It's not pie in the sky. It's an increase of $75,000. And forget these numbers on here for just a minute. Here's what I want you to know. Your overhead stays about the same. You don't have to go add 29 phone lines and 17 trucks to handle eight more jobs. You're already doing 30. You can handle 38 without significantly increasing your overhead. So here's what happens. You get a net profit of $40,000 a month. Oh, by the way, that's, that's $500,000 a year more that you can milk out of 
a two and a half million dollar company, it goes up to maybe three million dollars in sales. I don't know what is that. Let's do the math on this. Two hundred and eighty-five thousand. I've got my calculator out here. Times twelve. Okay, so now you got a three three and a half million dollar business, and you got a half a million dollars of extra profit. You say, well, I don't believe that's true. That's not possible. It's possible. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to figure out how to get that conversion ratio from 30% to 38%. You, you say, well, it's not that good. It's only maybe I get it up two or three points. Okay, well, two or three points. So you only add two, three hundred thousand dollars of profit. Who would care? Let's get it going and let's stop worrying so much about lead generation. Let's start handling the leads that we have better. You say, well, I already closed 40%. Yeah, but here's what you don't close: 60%. So let's get those guys close. You can grow your own money tree. It's just that simple. This is not pie in the sky. We've done this over and over again. You can do this. So let's talk about why prepositioning. Here's the real issue. In most cases, people know practically nothing about what you're selling. Nothing. They don't know about it. You know everything about your business. They don't know anything about windows or siding or roofing or kitchens or bathrooms or whatever it is you happen to sell. They have limited experience. They don't know how to choose somebody to, to do it for them. They don't know what to look for to what, what to watch out for. They want to be really sure when they buy that they're making a good choice, but they don't know how. So let me ask you this question. Here's the question. How much should you pay for a good piano? You say, well, that's a weird question to ask me on this webinar, or kind of out of left field. But here's the point. I'm t trying to take you out of your element and put you more in the element of your prospects. See, you don't ever buy pianos, so you don't really know how much a good piano should cost. If you went to a piano store, guess what? They're going to have $3,000 pianos. Guess what else they're going to have? $5,000 pianos. Guess what else they're going to have? $9,000 pianos. Guess what else they're going to have? $29,000 pianos. And on from there. Which one should you buy? Which one's the best? Can you look at a $4,000 piano and an $8,000 piano and they look identical? Yeah, they can look identical. So how do you know what to buy? How do you know what to look for? And the answer is you don't. You're completely at the mercy of the salesperson. You say, well, I'm going to go research it online. Okay, well, that's pretty good. But here's the point. If you don't have a familiarity with something, particularly that's a large ticket purchase, it's very difficult for you to know what to look for, what to watch out for, and so forth. So when you go into a meeting with a salesperson, you're really at their mercy. So here's a good question for you. How much should you pay for a good roof? Well, you might know if you sell roofing, but guess what your prospects don't know? How much should you pay for a good double-hung window? And these are questions that people don't know. And your job as marketer is first and foremost, number one, to facilitate the decision-making process of your prospects, to help them understand what to look for, what to watch out for, what to look for in terms of the product itself, whether it be a window or a roof or a a kitchen, and what to look for in terms of hiring a contractor. So we'll talk about those things. <laughs> Let's talk also about why prepositioning. Here's what you need to know. If you don't preposition, if you don't give people information on the front end, then they're left to fend for themselves while they gather information. You say, well, what's the matter with that? Well, they might get bad information, biased information, or no information. Have you ever gone on Google to look for something and after five or ten minutes of searching around, you found that you couldn't really find any good information? If you're going to look and see you know, wh when Dustin Hoffman's birthday is, that's easy to find. But if you're trying to find out, what uh, has anybody ever tried to search for, for health insurance online? That's a nightmare and a quagmire, which provider's best. It's almost completely impossible to tell. It's the same thing when it comes to remodeling. People go online, they start searching around, and guess what they find? They find biased information. They find websites that tell everybody that they're the best. They usually look very similar to other competitors. And it's difficult for people. So they get bad or no or lacking information. Also, let's talk about this. This is critical. Right now, right what I'm about to tell you, this is key to you understanding why prepositioning is so important. It's what I call A to Z versus L to Z. A to Z versus L to Z. If you do not engage in prepositioning, what will happen is your salesperson will sit down in the meeting with the prospect who doesn't really know anything generally speaking, and they will have to take them from A to Z in terms of knowing everything about the process. Let's take windows. They, they have to educate them about windows, what to look for, what to watch out for, what to look for in a contractor, what you do versus other companies. It's probably 
their first exposure to you. And it's a very difficult thing for people to want to pull the trigger on a seven, eight, twenty, thirty thousand dollar purchase when the first time they've met you is in the sales meeting. What we want to do is give them enough information to judge you, to feel comfortable with you, to trust you, and to also understand the product or service that you're selling so that when you show up to the sales meeting, they've already been able to accomplish a good percentage of their due diligence so that they're more likely to move forward. This tremendously helps one call closes. If you're a company that's having a difficult time with one call closes, you'd like to, but you're not getting them as much, it's because you're not prepositioning. It's just that simple. There's also an, an issue called, um, uh, well, what is it called? It's called price conditioning. Think about this. And if you got on this webinar looking for information, you're about to get it right now. I want you to think very carefully through this. <laughs> Have you ever gone to a sales meeting and the amount that the person thought that it was going to cost is significantly less than what you actually want to charge them? So for instance, let's say you want to sell windows and you're going to sell them windows and your quote's going to be $7,000. Have you ever given somebody a $7,000 quote, but what they thought the price was going to be was closer to two or three or $4,000? Do you realize what a huge obstacle that is in the sales meeting? If they are that far away from your price when they sit down with your salesperson, if they're thinking in their mind it's $3,000 and in your mind and in your, pri and your quotes are actually seven, you've got a $4,000 gap there. This is not unusual. This is not some kind of, I made this example up to illustrate a point that doesn't actually really exist. This is the real deal that happens dang near every freaking time you sit down with a prospect. They're thinking it's a lot less. And you wonder why it's so hard to get them to pull the trigger and say, well, yeah, I'll pay you $7,000. And you wonder why your sales meeting has to take two and a half hours to wear them down and to grind them out to where they finally say, well, gosh, I guess I'll do it. That's all fine and dandy, but you know what? It's really unnecessary. If you would take some of that, that process and put it on the front end, people will know who you are, what you stand for, how you're different, what you do, what you, they can expect when doing business with you, what, how you're better, that your quality is worth more money, and I'm going on an assumption here that you have quality and that you're more money than the cheap guys, and you start to close deals on first call closes, you start to get more money, they start to appreciate the value. They start to understand that you're worth more money, so they're willing to pay for it, and they're willing to pay for it, in many cases, on the first call. This is why you're here on this webinar today, to learn how to do this. Okay? Price conditioning. Closing ratios go up. Here's some benefits of providing pre-positioning. Number one, you're perceived as caring. And I'll tell you what the components of pre-positioning are just here are in just a minute. This is all preface. Your product is going to seem more important. You're going to preemptively destroy your competitors. Oh, I don't want to destroy my competitors. Really? You don't? Now, we don't have to say nasty things about them to destroy them. We just have to make it self-evident. Remember how it's, what is it, the Constitution? We hold these truths to be self-evident. We're going to make it self-evident to your prospects that your competitors are not a worthy, viable option, that you are the obvious choice to do business with without ever mentioning names, without ever bad-mouthing somebody, by just letting them see who you are, what you do, how you're different, how you're better, okay? Appointments are going to hold up. For some of you, this is not an issue. For other of you, of you this is an issue. You're going to start price conditioning like we just talked about. And then here's the key thing. This is really where the money is made. In this principle right here, make a note, confirmation bias kicks in. Let me tell you about confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a psychological principle that says that people tend to find evidence to support their existing beliefs and ignore evidence that goes against their existing beliefs, or at least they ex find excuses to rationalize negative evidence that doesn't support their, their beliefs, they, they rationalize it away. Which is why, when it comes to the presidential debates, which are going to start, what, next week, here's who you're most likely to be impressed with after the debates. Whoever you already liked, because this is how the brain works. We decide on something, and then we go look for evidence to support it. This is, why, this is why I've got Barack Obama's picture on here. This is not to say you like or don't like him. Here's what it is to say. You either like him or don't like them. There's nobody that's in between. Did you notice that? And here's where this comes in from a marketing principle. If we start to tell people stuff about our product or service and we start to make a belief in their mind that it's better, more worthy, higher quality, then they will tend to believe that. And then during the sales process, they will start to look for evidence to support that. Now, 
Here's a picture that you need to see. It's on your screen right now. I went to Holiday Inn Express. This was uh, several years ago. I was with my family. I've got six kids. We were on a road trip, and we stopped. My wife's major requirement for hotels on road trips is that they are newer and not crusty. She hates crust, okay? So we stopped at the Holiday Inn Express. It was brand new. It had only been open less than a year. We went in, and on the counter next to the check-in was a sign that said, Welcome to the Holiday Inn Express, home of the Stay Smart Showerhead. And it had a picture of this showerhead next to the check-in. As we checked into the room, next to the TV on the little uh, chest of drawers was another sign that said, Welcome to your room. When you get a chance, go check out the Stay Smart bathroom, featuring the Stay Smart showerhead. So immediately, of course, being a marketing guy, being led by this, this wonderful marketing, I went into the bathroom and I saw on the counter it said a little sign that said, Welcome to the Stay Smart bathroom, featuring, number one, oversized plush towels. And sure enough, they were. And featuring a bowed out shower curtain rod that gives you more room in the shower. And I looked at it and sure enough it was. Also featuring these uh, soaps and shampoos that looked really fancy. And then finally, fourth, featuring the Stay Smart shower head by Kohler. And I went and I opened the shower curtain and there it was and I took a picture of it. You can see it right there on your screen. Not only was the shower head there, but actually a piece of marketing telling me how great the shower head was. Telling me that the there was three different settings, gourmet sounding settings like rejuvenation, revitalizing, and relaxing. And uh, I turned on the shower, and sure enough, it was fantastic. Now, here's the question. In absence of the signage telling you to look at the shower heads, would you really notice the shower head in a hotel? Think about all the different components of a hotel stay that you probably never really pay that much attention to unless they're particularly bad. You've got the room size and furnishings. You've got the bed and how soft or hard it is, the pillows. You've got the TV, how big or small or clear or non-clear, how many channels it does or doesn't have. You've got the temperature. Is it good or bad? Is it easy to control? Are you hot or are you cold? And then you've got the bathroom. These are just some of the elements of a hotel. Room service, food availability, cleanliness of the hotel, facilities, workout room, pools, hot tubs, all those things. Out of all of those things, would you normally notice the shower head? And the answer is not generally unless the experience was particularly bad. If it was crusty, if it was dirty, if the pressure was low. But here's what happens with Holiday Inn Express. They point at that shower head. Remember the sign on the counter. Remember the sign next to the television. Remember the sign on the bathroom counter. And then, of course, the one on your screen actually hanging from the dumb shower head itself. All of this conspires to make you have a much more positive opinion of that shower head than you would if you otherwise had not been told to look at it. And this principle, it's called confirmation bias, is something that we can utilize in marketing for your company in the form of prepositioning. Prepositioning. So I'm going to show you how to quote unquote point at your shower head so that you can get the credit for having an awesome shower head. Now look at the shower head. It's a nice shower head. It, it, it delivered on the promise. And I'm going to go on an assumption that you can deliver on whatever promises you're willing to make to your prospects. Okay? So let's talk about what we want to communicate in prepositioning. The first thing is identity. Next, industry standards. Helping people understand why they should, what they should expect when doing business with contractors. Okay? Evidence and social proof. Now, let's talk about identity for just a minute. This is a webinar that we held a couple of months ago, and we talked about identity as being the ability to communicate who you are, what you do, what people can expect from you, and what the value proposition of doing business with you is in a very concise, powerful, precise, precision, passionate kind of a way. And I'll show you a couple examples of that here in a minute. Now, the, today's webinar is not intended to focus on the concept of identity. However, it's imperative that you understand the concept of identity so that you can understand how imperative it is to communicate that identity ahead of time so that you're more favorably prepositioned and so that confirmation bias then kicks in as people interact with you through prepositioning and the sales process. Okay? And then of course product information. So let's take a look. Here's the components of prepositioning. These are things that you need to make available and send to the prospect when? Before the sales meeting. Number one is your website. That's pretty obvious. We'll talk about it here in a minute. Number two, emails. Number three, reports. And number four is phone scripting. And I'm going to strongly encourage you to send prepositioning materials in the mail to prospects before you show up. And I'll cover some objections later about timing. And we set our appointments for the next day. And it's very difficult to get things to people very quickly. 
We'll cover that in just a minute. But the ideal, you can't always execute the ideal, but the ideal is to put all of this in people's hands before the sales appointment. Okay? So let's talk about your website and building your case. Now here's a website homepage for a company called Incognito Custom Closets. And I want to point a few things out to you. So here's what it says. There's a reason over 4,300 families have trusted Incognito since 1994. And then here comes a power statement. We always insist on doing every job exactly right. No flimsy hardware, drawer glides, or hinges ever. No cheap fiberboard or cheesy laminates. Every project custom measured, constructed, and installed. No fast prefab kits with clumsy fit. The surprisingly affordable closet solution. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got identity that's being integrated into this website on the top, on the bottom. We also have social proof. We've got 99 references available that people can click on and get just by clicking. We also have customer reviews. And we also have product information in the form of a product information guide that can be requested and be sent out as part of the pre-positioning. Now, here's what I want you to understand. The webinar that I did on pre-positioning, excuse me, on identity and on website marketing, both of those have been posted on this same website. If you go to the page that you use to register for this webinar, you can see a link to previous webinars and you can watch these. I don't have time to go through an entire webinar to get you up to speed on identity, social proof, and so forth. Suffice it to say, this stuff is absolutely 1 billion percent mission critical. If you execute pre-positioning without these components, it's going to be impotent. It will not perform. It will leave you flat, okay? It's better than nothing, but you're going to be missing out. So please, if you're not familiar with those concepts, go back and educate yourself. And you say, well, I don't want to have to go back. Well, then fine. Don't go back. I don't care. It's your business. Do whatever you want. But I hope you will so that you understand this. Let's look at another example. This is a window company positioned as the window nerd, looking for great windows with all the sales pressure. Again, we've got identity up here, we've got identity down here, and we've got social proof in terms of references, we've got customer reviews, and we've got product information in the website where you can learn about windows right there on the website. I won't take time again to go through this in detail. Suffice it to say, this is mission critical. This is an important part of your pre-positioning. This is allowing customers to understand what your identity is. Identity, by definition, powerful, precise, passionate, what they can expect when doing business with you, how you're different, how you're better, how you're better positioned, what your value proposition is to the marketplace. This company that you see on the screen, you can see that they will give you a quote over the phone, that they have no sales pressure, and that they're going to play no pricing games. It's a very straightforward value proposition, and oh, by the way, it's a value proposition that their customers love, okay? So we've got the social proof, we've got the product information. One more example, then we'll move on to some more what I'd call classic or traditional pre-positioning materials that are not web involved, okay? So here's the uh, Revive Remodeling website, persnickety, demanding, hard to please, then I'm the remodeler for you, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the cheapest, I am, however, according to my customers, the best. And we've got, again, identity information, we've got social proof, and we've got industry standards, compare local contractors, and we'll talk about that in detail right about now, okay? So this is all information that's available on the website. It becomes an, a critical part of the pre-positioning. Here's another website. I won't go into detail on this, just to show you another quick example. Okay, there you had 10 seconds to look at it. Let's go to the next one. I'm not going to just tell you that we have superior products at reasonable prices. I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. The best windows money can buy for $50 to $250 less than anywhere else. Kitchen bath remodeling with 40% less markups than others charge. Here's specifically how we win the price wars. This is a very powerful identity. Now, let's move into things that are not web-based. Well, I guess email is web-based, but not website-based. And let's talk about emails. Remember, there was four components. Number one was your website. Number two was emails. Number three was reports. That's where the heavy lifting is done, and we'll talk about those momentarily. And then number four is the uh, scripting that goes along with all of this. We'll get to that momentarily. So emails. You should send these out to all your leads. They should be identity-based. Tell some backstory, contractor standards, social proof. Now, here's what you need to know about emails. First of all, if you are not using a program such as MarketSharp to manage your email flow, that's just dumb. Why would you not do that? It's 
I, I don't know how much market sharp costs to buy, but I know they sell it on a web based platform where it's something like ninety nine dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month if you've got more users it's a little bit more it's so ridiculously cheap I don't know how they get those guys even stay in business I don't know how they make money charging you two hundred dollars a month but here's the point who cares that's their problem to deal with here's what you need to know you've got to get this software so that you can send this stuff out automatically because I guarantee you if you have Lisa in the back office have a job to try to figure out when and how to send this stuff out it's never gonna happen so all these great ideas, you're going to be like the 25% that say, yeah, well, we don't act, we don't, we've got it, but it's not good, or we don't execute. So all the great ideas in the world don't mean a hill of beans worth of difference if you don't actually execute them, and you can get software to help you execute this stuff, and if you don't, that's just dumb, okay? Well, that's me, Rich. Don't tell you. The guy just called me dumb. Well, if, you, if you're doing what I just said, you are dumb. Sorry. Here's my point. Get smart. Get the software, get the emails, get the website, get this stuff in place because the reality is if you got a two or three million dollar business, we're talking about a half a million dollars extra in profits just waiting to be harvested, okay? So here's a good example of an email. Subject line, we're excited to meet with you to plan your closet. This is after the appointment was set. Our philosophy is build it once, then never worry about it again. Thanks for giving us a chance to show you the true meaning of quality. Appointment reminder, Thursday, September 27, 6 p.m. If you're looking for whatever or just get it done, then you might want to cancel our appointment. Cookie cutter quality is not why people hire us. This is called hard-hitting identity-based email, okay? But if you're the kind of person who wants the job done exactly right and lasts forever, then we're going to get along just fine. When it comes to building quality closets, we insist on perfection. No clumsy hardware, drawer glides ever. You've seen this before. As you can imagine, we're not the fastest or we're not the cheapest option available, but we do a fantastic job and you can expect to only pay 10 to 25% more than many inferior alternatives. The fact is that quality does cost more, but not that much more. Do you see how I am already pre-qualifying them, pre-positioning, setting the frame of reference for the price and the expectation that quality is going to be there, but I'm doing it in such a way that it's very powerful and if your objection is, well, that's going to scare people off, they're not going to want to do business with me because I just told them they're more expensive. That's the biggest hunk of crap I've ever heard in my life. Every freaking person on the planet knows this. You don't just go out and buy the cheapest stuff. You don't. Go look at the car in your garage. Is it the cheapest car imaginable? No. Go look at the TV that you're watching. Is it the cheapest car imaginable? No. Look at your phone system. Is it the cheapest phone imaginable? No. Look at everything else in your house, in your office, in your life. Is it the cheapest imaginable possible? The answer is no. People understand that quality costs more. To tell them that is not offensive. It is not scary. It lets people know, oh, here's a company that actually gives a crap about me, that's going to actually treat me right, that's actually going to be worth it. Instead of what you normally do is you say, we're the cheapest. We got the best prices. We'll give you $2,000 off if you set an appointment with us. And you immediately, automatically set the stage that you're going to give them cheap stuff. Why? Why? Why would you do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. Here's what makes sense. Let people know what you do, how you do it, why you're better, why you're different. And if, you're, if your identity is based on being less expensive, like the one I showed you a minute ago, give them specific reasons why your quality is still high, but your prices are low. You see what I'm talking about here? So I'm getting carried away, and I know my sponsors right now are probably going berserk. This guy's going crazy. What are we doing? I don't care. I want you to understand this concept. You've got to understand this concept. This is how closing ratios go up. This is how people buy from you and want to buy from you before your person ever sets foot in their house is this kind of stuff right here. It's the website I showed you, and it's the email that then comes. Here's another example. Would you, like, would you rather buy windows from a nerd or a bully? People always ask me if I mind being called a nerd. Actually, I consider it a compliment. Appointment reminder. Think about it. What's the opposite of a nerd? It's a bully. In the, in the window business, there are plenty of bullies. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of nice people, too. But the fact is the bullies outnumber the nice guys by a pretty good margin. Bullies are salespeople and company owners who try to manipulate you to buy, take advantage of your lack of knowledge when it comes to windows. They try to get you to buy windows that are overpriced or inferior quality or both. Simply put, I wasn't brought up that way. I became a Christian at age 15. I decided after high school that I'd attend Bible college in preparation for a career in the ministry. After three years of college, I ended up getting married and dropping out owing to the fact I had no financial support. But I was and still am to this day deeply influenced by Christian values. Well, I don't know if we should talk about Christian values in my marketing. Well, if it's your identity, do it. Did you see me talking about Christian values in the other email? No, it wasn't a part of their identity, but it is for this guy. 
not to get all preachy, but I really think there's something to be said for the whole treat people the way you want to be treated thing. Let me pause right here. I'm pausing. If you just got freaked out and you said, oh, well, this guy just told me that to be effective, I have to be a Christian and tell people that makes me uncomfortable, though. That is not what I just told you. That is this guy's identity. This is what this guy does. Let me show you another one. We saw this guy's website earlier. Subject, ready for your meeting with Portland's most persnickety remodeler. Most remodelers hate dealing with high-maintenance customers who complain about wanting every little thing a certain way. Those are the only kind I get along with. If you're looking for whatever or just get it done, then you might want to cancel our appointment. Cookie cutter is not what people, why people hire me. If you're the kind of person that, com that other companies hate doing business with because your demands are so unrelenting, we're going to be a great match. If you're the kind of person who's perfectly willing to send your meal back to the chef three times because it's not cooked to your exact specification, we're going to get along just fine. Actually, you're my dream customer. The reason is simple. I'm actually even more demanding than you are. I totally appreciate your fussiness. Of course, you would want ex you want exactly the right stain for your cabinets. Even if it has to be redone twice, you'll spend three hours choosing a pull knob or a drawer because you're you know you'll spend the next 10 years regretting it if you don't absolutely love it. I look forward to meeting you and starting the process of get creating exactly what you want. Sincerely, Don Isaacson, obsessed with perfection. Let me tell you something, people. There's a ton of money being made in this email on his website, all of the above. Do you understand this? See, here's what you can do. You can have a normal-looking website that you put together with some creepy, goofy Internet company that doesn't know anything about, about marketing, but they're good at coding stuff. And you can have one that says, hey, we're the best. And then you can send them either no email or a static email or a regular email that doesn't say anything. And then your salesperson can show up, get beat to death by the, sale, by the prospect, and you can wonder why they're only closing 22%. That's one choice. Here's another choice. Get your identity in place. Let us help you do it. You probably don't know how to do it. Let's be honest. We can help you with that. Get the prepositioning put in place. Get the email put in place. This is stuff that will make a massive difference. Okay? This isn't just some other webinar about some other cute little topic about marketing. This is the keystone right now what we're talking about. Okay? Here's another email that Revive would send out. Here's a list of all of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, references. Call them. We're coming out to meet you. Call these people. I'm not going to show you any more emails. We don't have time, but give it, get, you get the idea. Okay? How many emails should you send? Well, if you've got one day between the appointment, send them one email. If you have an appointment and they don't close, continue to send them these emails. They can be used as post-positioning emails to confirm that they made a good choice when they decided to go with you or if they're thinking about going with you. Okay? Now, let's talk about pre-positioning. Send it to all your leads. Here's what it's going to include, a presentation folder, a product report, contractor standards guide, and a cover letter. Let me give you an example of what this looks like. This is called the permanent roofing solution, the last roof you'll ever buy, period. It's a metal roofing report put together by, uh, this, well, it's put together by us, and we uh, make these available for our customers, whether it's regular roofing, metal roofing, windows, siding, gutters, gutter protection, kitchen remodel, bathroom remodeling, decks, you know, whatever it is. We have these reports that can be customized for you. <clears throat> Look at this. But it costs too much. This is the first thing in the metal roofing report. If we've heard it once, we've heard it a thousand times. When people find out that, yes, permanent roofing costs more up front than regular roofing, they almost always say they love the way it looks, but that it costs too much. So we immediately go into, guess what? Price conditioning. Why? Well, because a metal roof costs about three times more than a regular roof, and people already underestimate how much a regular roof is going to cost, so they're going to dramatically underestimate how much a metal roof is going to cost. We've taken metal roofing companies and increase their one call close rate from 0% or 0.01%, the occasional nut that would give them money, to closer to the neighborhood of one third, one call close, because of prepositioning that helps people understand, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit more. Here's why. We can transform your home into a stunning show place, how to have the best looking home on the block, get 85% more of your money back on a permanent metal roof immediately. And then we compare aesthetics and we compare the increase in home value to metal, slate, tile versus asphalt. See? Extreme weather, fire, no match for your metal roof. A picture of a house that's been spared a fire because it had a metal roof. Wildfire devastates the entire neighborhood except for the metal roofed home. How long should a good roof last? Forever. And then we compare the longevity of metal, slate, tile, and asphalt versus uh, uh, we compare those against asphalt, and we do the same thing for stormproof. Dra dramatically lower your energy bills. And then we talk about why 
metal roofs lower your energy bill and how you can get rebates on it. We talked about how it's uh, environmentally friendly, reduces waste, recycles materials, saves you energy, and it makes you feel good, and how it uh, kicks asphalt's butt. This is a comparison report. This helps people understand the advantages before when? Before your salesperson ever shows up. Okay? We put the same kind of report together for bathroom remodeling. A remodeling design portfolio, if you do maybe kitchen remodeling. We put together a homeowner's guide for replacement windows. This is one of our customers, Hanson's Windows. This is a $50 million roofing company, the fourth largest remodeling company in the United States. They're in the, they're in the worst economic zone imaginable, Detroit, and they're blowing and going because they understand this stuff, okay? Dear homeowner, this free informational report exposes the truth, the deception, and the stuff everyone in this industry simply wants to keep under wraps. Here's the table of contents. And it's got why should you replace your window? Section two, what type of window should you buy? Number three, what kind of glass? Number four, window ratings, what they mean. Section five, six, so forth. You can see it on there. And I won't go through each page of this other than to say this is kind of what it looks like. There's multiple pages. What type of glass should you choose? Window ratings. What type of frame materials? Window trim, exterior, how to choose the right contractor. Should I refinance my replacement windows? What to do next? Frequently asked questions. Here's something about Hanson's windows. Okay, is there such a range in new window price? Why is there such a range in new pricing? New window pricing, I see 190, 600, and 1200. And we explain it to people. How do I know if the installation is good? How do I, why should I choose vinyl for replacement windows? Okay, all of this is covered in the report. You say, well, I don't think people are going to read all that stuff. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Number one, will people read all that stuff? Answer, absolutely they will. If, number one, it's available, that, that's number one. If it's not available, they're not going to read it. If it is available, they'll read it. If it's pointed out to them that it's available and it's important. And number two, if it's written in a format that's easy for people to quickly skim, scan, and find things that look important, interesting, and relevant to them. What we do not create is a white paper that is boring, that is hard to read. We create a report that has nice graphics, that has headlines, that makes it easy for people to flip through it and say, wow, this is great. Now, next thing, if they don't read it, that's okay. If they just have it and they see that we've put the effort into it, it makes them feel good and warm and fuzzy inside even if they don't read it, because how many other companies you think are putting this kind of effort into it? Oh yeah, none. See how this works? Okay. <laughs> Smart Electric, what, service with the woman's touch. Okay, let's take a look at this one. It's just a quick report. I mean, we can do this for any kind of industry. I know you're probably not an electrical contractor, but if you were, just put this together, send it out ahead of time. Looks fantastic. People are very, very impressed. They understand what you do. I mean, let's go back on this. Look at this. We've got six different guarantees. We put it out there in writing. Oh, we've got 10 guarantees. Excuse me. We've got frequently asked questions. Okay. And we talk about how this company was started. All right. We've got these same reports for gutter protection. We've got them for sunrooms. And uh, we're going to talk about contractor standards guide. I'm actually going to go forward two slides. And uh, we're going to talk about contractor standards guide. This is really a money piece here. You've got to st stick with me and understand this. This is extraordinarily important. But before we do this, I want to go back over to another poll. Let's do this. Let's go to poll number two. So please fill this one out. Based on what you've seen so far, does your company have a powerful identity? So go ahead and fill that poll out real quick. All right, come on, vote, y'all. Vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay, good. The voting is coming in nice and strong here. All right, I'm going to give you a five, four, three, two, one. All right. Let's take a look. 14% uh, say no, 40% say sort of. 36% uh, say, yeah, you need the makeover. Only 10% say, yeah, I've got one. The, here's what that means. Let me, let me explain what that means to you. Not to be, you know, melodramatic or making a point that doesn't exist. Let me just be very precise with you on what this means. That means that for 90% of you, this is self-reported, so we want to take a closer look at that 10% and see how powerful it actually is. 
because my experience is this is more like 99%, but we'll, we'll give you benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's some of our current customers on, on here that are filling that out. Here's, let me be precise though. 90% of you just told me the following. We don't have the tool that we need to build our, we don't have the foundation to build our house on to do pre-positioning properly. We don't have it. We don't have an identity that's powerful, that's articulate, that's precise, that's passionate. If you don't have that, you're screwed from the beginning. You say, wow, we do all these other things. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you. And I don't want to minimize all the great things you do. And when you say, oh, that guy just t told me I'm screwed. I don't, you know, screw him. No, no, that's not what this is about. Here's what I'm trying to say. Whatever you're doing now that's working, fantastic. This is all about augmenting it and making it even more powerful. Do you realize that if you don't have a powerful identity, if you don't engage in pre-positioning, these are all upside opportunities for you just waiting to be grabbed. That 30% to 38% that we talked about at the beginning, it's available. It's right there. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to give uh, uh, a few minutes to a couple of sponsors. And to make this happen, we are going to go to Bath Wraps by Liner Direct. And let me get over here. Dave, Dave, are you with me? Yes, good morning, Rich. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce Liner's Direct and Bath Wraps. Uh, my name is Dave Wilson. I'm the Director of Marketing here in suburban Chicago. Bath Wraps is the leader in one-day bath remodeling. When you hear that term, what you should think of is really the hottest remodeling trends out there, the tub-to-shower conversion where our dealers rip out the old bathtub in a house and, and put in a big spacious shower, grab bars, bench seat, think safety when you hear about that. Walk-in tubs, which we're all familiar with as America ages, those are becoming more and more popular and we've got a great program for those, as well as traditional tub systems. So what we do offer our dealer network are exclusive territories, extensive training such as business owner boot camps and launch seminars, outstanding support in the field for both your installation as well as your sales force and marketing efforts. And then something that really is our identity and sets us aside is our, is our extensive iPad sales tools, including our unique Build-A-Bath app, which is available free at the iTunes store, where you can design your, your next dream bath right there on the iPad. Sales reps use that in the house. Customers can use that. What a great way to, to show what the final after product is going to look like for their dream bath. Potential profit and growth opportunities are truly unlimited. If you think about the average ticket, four to five thousand dollars for a tub to shower conversion, all the way up towards twenty thousand dollars for a walk-in tub project. So, as you can see, it can really help average and transfer your diversification of business. Our focus on, on success really comes down to launching you, supporting you and generating exclusive leads in your territory. We have launched an exclusive lead program backed by Headquarters Marketing this year, and it's really become the talk of the industry. I urge you, as we heard earlier about the Qualified Remodeler Tuesday before the Remodeling Show event, we're, we're one of the sponsors of that event. We'd love to meet you, love to talk more. If you're not going to be able to attend that, certainly feel free to go to linersdirect.com slash dealer, or email me, dave at linersdirect.com. Thank you, Rich. We certainly appreciate being able to support the content. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate you being here. And uh, that iPad, I've seen the iPad tool. It's really cool. And uh, what a huge uh, a, a competitive advantage that is. Thanks, Dave. All right. Let's now go to uh, Market Sharp. Tim, are you with me? I am, Rich. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, I've got a couple slides for you. Want me to throw them on there? Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, we're going to give away books. We'll do that in a minute. Go ahead. All right, well, listen, just want to say a couple words about our product here at MarketSharp. I think we're friends with many of the, many of the folks in the webinar are here today. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's the industry's leading web-based CRM system. And uh, with Qualified Remodeler being involved, we always like to point to what they do really well. And what that is, they have their top 500 list available. And every year we watch that. And, gosh, I think now this year we're probably somewhere between 45 to 50% of the people in the top 500 list use our flagship product, which is called Market Sharp M. So I'm pretty excited about that. Why don't you go to the next slide, Rich, and I just want to mention one or two things here that are important. Certainly, this product can do a lot for you. It can generate leads for you. We all need more of those. But as it relates to today's content, which I think is just, just awesome, uh, we can really help with that, too. And Rich mentioned that it's, it's a good thing to know all this stuff, but you've got to somehow implement it. 
And I love the concept of what we call turning data into dollars. And that's really what I think business is all about nowadays, is being able to manipulate all this data we collect and make it as efficient as possible in your sales and marketing process. So there's all sorts of things that our application can do for you. One thing that popped out with me, because I just got a testimonial letter from somebody, and uh, if you notice here on maybe a third or two-thirds of the way down in the left column, it says lead paint compliancy. And um, you know what that's all about. Uh, the EPA came around a year or two ago and scared us all, and we all got to get certified and do certain work practices and all that. And then it kind of blew away, and a few people got some fines, and not many, and it really everybody's kind of like settled down and said, oh, no big deal. Well, here's what's happened. The EPA is starting to call on people now and say, hey, can I have your record for the last 18 months? Don't know if it's happened to anybody on this webinar, but it's starting to happen. Because they got your number, just like an IRS audit. You know, this is what they're doing. And one of our customers a while back gave us notes and says, hey, help. You know, the EPA just said they're coming to see us. You know, we really want to make sure we understand how market chart works to help us do this. And uh, one of the features in there is it tracks all this compliancy stuff in your business. It makes sure. And I got a note from her, and it says, hey, we just finished the EPA audit and made it through. It's awesome. purpose of the note is to let you know we couldn't have done it without this software. We were quickly able to answer all their initial requests for lists of completed jobs involving pre-78 homes and later supplying them all the organized files of the mandated EPA-led pa paperwork. And um, don't think that this is all going away. It's really part of our business that we didn't have years past is regulation compliance. And I just thought I'd share that story with the group here today. In addition to the lead generation, lead tracking, and automating some of the processes you're talking here today, Rich, uh, we think there's certainly plenty of things that you can do with Market Chart. So go ahead and get a hold of us. Uh, we'll be at the remodeling show also, so visit our booth. Uh, you can also reach us at our phone number, 800-335-4254, or, of course, www.marketchart.com. So back to you, Rich. Thank you, Tim. All right. We've got uh, about 15 more minutes here. So thanks for sticking with me. We're going to get through this next part, which is the Contractor Standards Guide. This is one of the most critical elements. I want you to pay super close attention to this, and I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the screen. Okay, we talked about this briefly right before the uh, quick break there. Contractor Standards Guide, you see on the bottom here, it says Code of Ethics and Competency. Learn how to choose the right contractor the first time. This is something that we put together for our customers that, helps, that they send out to their clients, their prospects, that helps distinguish them from the other contractors. And if you remember that concept of confirmation bias, this is where it really starts to play into your advantage. So here's what we've done. This is uh, opening that guide to the first and second page. On the left-hand side, you see there's a table of contents. On the right-hand side, it says, I was shocked and embarrassed when I found out that contractors were America's number one most complained about industry. That's signed by the owner of the company. And uh, in this case, is Brian Elias. If we were to put one of these together for you, that would, of course, be you, your picture. So you're thinking about replacing your windows, roof, or siding. And then it just tells a little story in there about how, how uh, the industry standards weren't strong enough, so this company took it upon themselves to create a list of standards and to sh help people educate themselves what they need to look for, watch out for, and be aware of when they go to hire a contractor. On the left-hand side, you see the table of contents, and it very quickly and visually easily breaks it into four sections, stability, reputation, professionalism, and workmanship. And this is the key... Uh, thing. What we're going to do is tell people what the standards are and then show them the proof that we meet or exceed those standards. So, uh, whoops, let me get to the next slide. We're actually going to do the giveaway for books at the end. We don't have time right now. So let's go to uh, the first category, which is stability. And this is kind of how this thing works. Category one is stability. That's notated by the blue page. It says uh, what you need to look for. Photos of showroom and staff, why it's important. Believe it or not, many contractors use a pickup truck and an office for a showroom. Make sure that any contractor you're dealing with is substantial, is substantial enough to have a real office with normal business functions, accounting, production, sales, etc. If a contractor does not have an office, that should tell you something. Don't fall for the old. We just use our uh, trucks as offices line. Okay? Now, maybe you're, you don't have a showroom, so we would need to adjust that for you. But this is the idea. And then we tell, here's the standard that we utilize for our company, and we've got this building, we've got sales training, et cetera. On the next page, it says what to look for, bank letter, why it's important. Uh, and it tells how long you've been with the bank, what the standard is, what to look for, supplier letters. And these are letters vouching for the stability of the company. 
again, under the category of stability. Next, business license and a picture of the business license, insurance certificate, and it, this explains in very simple layman's terms what you should look for to prove stability and what to look for to prove uh, all of these different categories. Here's one that we have. It's the uh, debt status of the company. And we talk about how companies that have debt are more likely to go out of business and how that's more likely to negatively affect you. And then we say that every company should have a letter that is certified by their uh, uh, CPA and notarized that says that they are uh, a debt-free company or whatever their debt level is. The next part of this is reputation. We talk about the importance of a Better Business Bureau letter and memberships and things like NARI or HBA or um, Chambers of Commerce. And we talk about online reviews, customer references, and, and how to find those and how many should be expected from a reputable contractor. This is a company that has a, a, a lot of customers and a lot of, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, references, and you need to make those available. Next, accolades and awards. As you can see here, this particular company was the, con the replacement contractor um, of the year. So that's an accolade that they would want to let people know about. And they've also won other awards and been written about in other uh, magazines and newspapers. And so we put that in here so people can see it. What we're trying to do, remember, pointing at the showerhead. We're showing people how great we are and say, look, this is what you need to look for. What to look for? Direct access to the company owner. Make sure that, that he's got a cell phone that you can call him anytime if there's a problem. The next section, first one was stability, then reputation. This is a real key section. This is one called professionalism. And we customize this for uh, whatever it is uh, appropriate for your company. But first of all, we've got product, multiple product options. Bid, detailed bid specifications and price integrity, and we show how we uh, have a pre-printed price list so that salespeople aren't just making numbers up. Here's a key one. I want you to pay particular attention to this. It's on the left-hand side of the screen. What to look for. No tricks, no pressure sales agreement. This is a sales agreement that's put together. We put this together for our customers. You can put one together yourself if you want. That tells people what to expect in regards to sales pressure when dealing with you. This is one of the keystone documents and marketing pieces that we're going to use in this pre-positioning um, process. You're going to see in a minute when I get to scripts, we're going to talk about this no pressure sales agreement when they first call in for an appointment and when we call back to confirm the appointment. We also have a job site cleanup roster, a worker conduct agreement. These are all things that are in writing so that we're showing our prospects and our customers we have processes and procedures, rules and regulations surrounding these things. So for instance, on the no tricks, no pressure, Here's what it's signed, signed by the salesperson. I will respect the customer's time. If I can't be on time, I'll call to alert. I'll keep my clothing neat and clean. I'll respect the customer's telephones and bathrooms and so forth. I will strive to find the best solution. I will not utilize high-pressure techniques to force customers to comply with my request. I will not sell products when they're financially not able to manage the investment. I will give my customers a fair price and a fair opportunity to consider their options. I'll educate my customers on all sides of the decision being made. I will give my customers the opportunity to express concerns and work to resolve them. And finally, in the event the customer is not ready to move forward, I will respect their decision. I want you to see how powerful this is to put this in writing and to send it to people ahead of time so that now when your salesperson shows up, guess what? They're not scared of the salesperson. They know because we've put it in writing that we're going to respect you. Okay? Background checks and drug tests, guarantees. We've got workmanship guarantees that we put in place. We talk about our certified installers program, our money back guarantee, our lifetime and worry free guarantees. We've got job site photos. These are all things that we put out there on the front end. And again, you might say, are people going to read all that? And the answer is, we don't need them to read all this. We just need them to have it, to be impressed, and to glance through it, and to look at certain specific things that we point out to them. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay? There's a checklist at the end. This tool can do wonders for your business, absolute wonders for your business, okay? Now, before I get into uh, a couple more uh, details on that, let me show you this. This is an appointment sheet that we send out with the uh, reports. It basically just has identity in it. I won't go into detail on that. We put it into a um, folder. This is an example of a folder for a company called ANA Services. This looks kind of weird, but this thing has to fold, okay? It's a front and a back of a folder, and it's actually the back is on the left and the front is on the right if you were to fold that, okay? Save money on energy bills without breaking the bank. 
We deliver superior products at reasonable prices, volume pricing, low overhead, best brands, multifaceted energy solutions. Okay, so you get the idea. It's a folder. You put all this stuff in it. Okay, you send it out via priority mail if time permits. The benefits of a tangible, holdable thing is significant. Now, if you say to me, well, we don't have time to do that because we set our appointments too soon, well, then the second best way to do it is to send a PDF out or a link to where people can find this information on your website. But I want you to strongly consider the benefit of printing this stuff. Yes, it's expensive to print it. Yes, it costs money and takes time, and it's a hassle and a pain in the butt. But putting this stuff tangibly in people's hands, I'm telling you, it makes a difference. I'm telling you, I've seen it make a difference. Well, we don't want to go through that time and that hassle and that expense. I'm not telling you to slow down your sales process. I'm not telling you, instead of going out and seeing somebody tomorrow night, to go see them two days from now so that they can get your prepositioning. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that if you're going to see somebody tomorrow, put this in the mail to them today. They'll get it tomorrow, even if they only have a chance to get it out of their mailbox before they see you. It's powerful. Not always available, but when available, do this. Scripting is going to make a big difference in compliance. Let me show you a script. So when the lead call comes in, you take their general information, set the appointment, and then you want to talk about the prepositioning materials. We ask them, have you had a chance to look on our website? The chance is pretty high that they've been on your website. If not, you want to steer them to the website. One of the things that we're known for is dot, 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 and then whatever your identity is. Tell them it in a short 30-second elevator pitch, which we help our clients write. Next, I'm going to mail you or email you, depending on the situation, a report. We want to focus as we talk to them about their identity and no pressure sales. So, for instance, we want to say we're going to send you a report. It's called our Contractor Standards Guide. It helps you to understand what to look for and what to watch out for when hiring a contractor. One of the things in there is what we call our No Tricks, No Pressure Sales Agreement. Mr. Johnson, I want you to know this. We have an agreement signed by our salespeople, our sales manager, and our owner in writing that guarantees that we are not going to put pressure on you to buy things, to try to sell you things you can't afford, and to uh, twist your arm, which is one of the, uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, reputations that our industry has earned. We're not going to do that. We put it in writing. We'll send that over to you. It's in the guide that I'm going to send you. It's in the email that I'm going to send you, whatever the case is. I want you to know that it's going to be a, it's going to be a no pressure situation. We're there at your house to help you make the best decision. Okay, Mr. Johnson, you have now just massively put his mind at ease, and he's going to feel much better when you show up on his door. Okay, commit them to reading it. Hey, could you take just a few minutes to glance through it? They don't need to read the entire thing. Confirmation call. You'll also want to use that report as the focal point when you call to confirm. I would suggest that you have the same person do all of your confirmation calls Reaffirm that they received the information kit. Did you receive our package via priority mail? Could you grab it real quick? Is it handy? Do you see the letter with the owner's picture? There's a checklist on that that you can go over with them on the phone. Here's what you need to do prior to the meeting. Would you open the green report to the first page? That's a picture of our owner. His name is Brian Elias. He put together a set of standards that you can use to judge a contractor. If you look on the left page, you'll see that they're broken into four different categories. Stability, reputation, professionalism and workmanship. If you have a moment before we show up, if you could glance through this report, it's going to help you make the best decision. It's going to show you what you can expect when doing business with us. Could you do me a favor and turn to page 14? Page 14 is what we call our no tricks, no pressure sales agreement. Here's what that means, blah, 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 blah. Mr. Johnson, I want you to know that when we show up, it's going to be a no pressure situation. We're there to help you make the best decision. We're honored to have the ability to come out and show you some things. If we have the ability to do business with you, if you hire us, we'd be honored. Otherwise, hey, it's your call. We're not there to pressure you. And now you walk in with a completely different mindset, with a completely different prospect. Okay? Go ahead and read the rest before we come out. So here's the recaps of pre-positioning. You're perceived as caring. Products seem more important. You preemptively destroy your competitors. Your appointments are going to hold up better. You're going to start to price condition. And confirmation bias, remember Barack, remember Holiday and Express pointing at the showerhead, all of that's going to kick in and work to your advantage. If you fail to do these things, none of these advantages are going to be working for you. This is the kind of thing that takes time, it takes effort, it takes discipline, and it takes a little bit of money. And therefore, hardly anybody does it. But I'm telling you, these are the little things that make the massive, massive difference 
in your business. Let me show you this letter by a company called JP Construction, it's primarily a roofing company. I wrote this to one of our consultants that was working with them. It says, Dear Dan, I didn't believe you when you told me what would happen, but I did it anyway. I was flat out wrong. This marketing crap really works. The phones are ringing, appointments and sales have doubled. The crews are busy. Our revenues are up almost five times higher. We're making a lot more money. Thanks to the marketing program, we're now proving our value. We're getting out of the doggy dog price game that used to drive me nuts. I knew we were better than most roofers out there, but we had trouble showing it. Now we prove it. It's powerful. We're closing deals we never would have had at a higher prices. Our leads and appointments are up 200% and our closings and our prices are way up. We're using some new internal processes that have helped us be better. So I know that you weren't BSing me. I know that there's more we can do to make it even stronger. Now, let me put, I'm going to put this in here a little bit bigger. What's just as amazing to me are the hidden benefits. My sales manager is actually having fun with the new sales approach and tools. He's now commonly greeted on the first call in a friendlier way. Sometimes they relieve sort of way. The customer says they feel like they have someone they can trust. They actually talk about the ad, the prepositioning when they call. And in person, it's amazing. Our sales presentation is stronger than ever. Customers regularly tell us that we're by far the most professional company they've ever seen. It feels good. Everyone in the company has a new focus and can feel the positive momentum since we started this marketing. They're believers because they're seeing the results. Here's what I need to point out to you about this company. It's the exact same company that they were before they put the prepositioning and the marketing together. It's the same company. They didn't go out and suddenly innovate themselves to make themselves so much better. They just now let people know what they do. People say that they're by far the most professional company they've seen. How is that possible? It's called pointing at the shower head. Okay, let's wrap this up. People ask us all the time, is there some way that, you, that we can do business with Monopolize Your Marketplace? Yes. We offer foundational marketing that you have to have in order to operate. It starts with forging your identity. That's something we can help you do. Hang on just a second. We're going to give away the book. Then you can choose packages that make the most sense for your business. We have a website package, prepositioning packages, home show packages, proximity marketing packages, new mover packages. Many of these can be used in conjunction with MarketSharp if you have that software. MarketSharp helps you to launch them. We help you create the content that you launch through those programs. Pricing is modular. It's easy to afford. Okay? We're going to do one more poll here. And the last poll is just to give us an idea of what you want to take out of this webinar. So let's launch the poll, which is, which of these companies would you like to learn more about? Please fill that in. You've got our sponsors. Monopolize your marketplace, market sharp, all weather coatings, window depot, bath wraps, by liners direct. Go ahead and fill that out. We'll give you come on. Come on. Come on. I can see who's voting and who's not. Okay. Keep it going. Keep it going. I'm not going to stop this poll until we get more voting. All right, there we go. It just takes everybody a little while. People are filling out multiple ones. So I'll give you just a couple more seconds. All right. Keep going. All right, looks like we've hit the end. Thank you for that. All right, now, here's what you should do next. First thing you can do is, if you're interested in Monopolize Your Marketplace, request a free identity consultation and website evaluation. This is something we will do for you for free. Here's what you have to do. You have to request it. If you don't request it, it's going to be hard to do it. We're going to discuss your business, your situation, find out what makes you tick, what your identity is, evaluate your website. We'll also help you with the uh, prepositioning situation, okay? to resist to request your consultation, simply do this. There's a form at mymonline.com slash consultation. mymonline.com slash consultation. Here's what it looks like. mymonline slash consultation. If you go to this website, here's what you'll see. It looks like this. And if you scroll to the bottom of this page, you'll see it looks like this. <laughs> okay. And down there, there's an appointment calendar. And you can actually just fill out when you'd like to uh, set that for so just set it up and fill in the form and it'll it'll it's automatic so you don't have to call us you don't have to compare calendars with us if it's available on this calendar then it's available for you so go ahead first come first serve if you're kind of time sensitive you might want to get there faster we do have a limited amount of uh, availability it's not like we can handle 5,000 we got a ton of people on this webinar so if you're interested in that go there right away and get signed up the sooner you do it the better okay now here's what we what we uh, offer our customers is is a bonus package. If you go to the mymonline.com bonus package, then you'll see uh, we sell a bonus package. It's eight thousand nine eighty five. It's 
um, includes MYM Insider training. That includes multiple webinars that we do every month. I'll let you look at this online. I don't need to go through it in detail right now. We also have a live training program. It's fantastic. Our uh, customers tell us they love it. Automatic free bonuses. Uh, we'll give you three free months of our insider program. It's our educational program plus some CD sets. But here's the key thing right here. When you sign up with our program, we're going to give you $5,000 of free fulfillment packages from this list. So basically, we give you monopoly money and you spend it on this list. Whether you want to buy an identity package for $1,000, pre-positioning package, we'll put together your contractor standards guide, we'll put together a product report, we'll write the emails for you, we'll design the folder, we'll design the sheet, all the stuff that I just showed you, we'll just do it for you. You spend $1,000 of the $5,000 of monopoly money we give you when you join our program and we'll do that for you. That's the member pricing. Now, if you say, well, I don't want to join your membership program, then you can pay the non-member prices. It's higher, uh, but, you know, it, it is, uh, if you only want one or two things, that's a better way to go, even though you pay a little bit more. Okay, we'll build your website for you with the identity. We'll, we'll overhaul your website content. We'll put together, you know, some of these other things you would need to uh, just look at. If you go to this page, you can mouse over. It tells you what's included. We'll write ads for you. We'll do pay-per-click, SEO, whatever you want to do. There's also a link where you can click and get a ton of information about that stuff, okay? Uh, the payment for that is uh, it, if you do a one-year program with us, it's $19.99 down and $4.99 a month for 14 months. If you go a two-year program, it's a little bit cheaper. It's only $3.99 down, uh, a month, uh, and we do give you an iPad, and uh, also we give you $6,500 in free fulfillment packages instead of $5,000. So um, if you're interested in that, go to there and uh, you can take advantage of that but what you really need to do is go to oh, what you really need to do is go to this page right here let me put it on the screen one more time okay it's this page right here which is MYM online uh, consultation now what I'll do now is I'll take any questions you have if you want to uh, type in questions into the question module I will take any questions you have we do have a lot of people on the call, so please be patient. Okay. Any questions? Please feel free to type them in right now. I'll take any questions on the subject of prepositioning or identity. You have to type them in. I can't answer questions that are not asked. It's very difficult. <laughs> We've got enough people on this call. There should be some questions. Normally we have 10 or 15. We can't get to them all. Anyone? Okay. Can you define prepositioning? I have a broad idea, but is there something specific? Prepositioning is anything you do before you show up to meet with the prospects in person that helps them understand who you are, what you do, why you're different and better, that helps them be comfortable with you and want to do business with you. As defined by this webinar, it includes your website. It includes emails that you send before the uh, sales meeting. It includes reports that can be either mailed or emailed to, to prospects before the meeting. It also includes a folder and an overview sheet that tells people what to expect during the appointment. Those are all what I would call pre-positioning materials. Okay? Next question, what's, what's needed if there isn't any relative competition? <laughs> well, if there's not any competition, then I guess you don't need anything uh, other than maybe convincing them that they need to buy what you sell in the first place instead of just simply choosing not to do anything. Okay, but if there's not any competition, then that's a little bit, uh, uh, makes it unnecessary to have a contractor standards guide. Next question, we send a per estimate email, but some people don't want to even give an email address over the phone. What can I do to give an email so I can send this out? Uh, well, I think one thing you can do is let them know what it is that you're going to be emailing to them and then verbally assure them that you're not going to be spamming them and then follow through on your promise to not spam them. That doesn't always work. Uh, there's going to be some people that still say no. People are getting very sketchy about giving emails out to people. But generally what we found is if they set an appointment, they're going to be more uh, willing to give email addresses. And in the cases where they don't, then I would just send it to them via mail. Okay? I mean, that's kind of a touchy subject. Next, okay, questions are rolling in now, by the way. Here's the next one. Um, how would a one-call close situation go with prepositioning, telling the lead that we don't do pressure sales? Wouldn't that lead call that salesperson out on this? Now, that's got to be, that's a great question, and it will not happen if you position your sales properly. So here's the most common way that people will do a price drop that can still work within this situation. 
if you go into the uh, home and you say, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you a price today that's going to be guaranteed for 90 days or for 365 days or for 30 days, whatever the amount of time is, is not relevant. I'm going to give you a 90-day guaranteed price. You go through your presentation. At the end, you say, here's the 90-day guaranteed price. It's $600 per window. Then a lot of you like to go into the what I call the efficiency close. Mr. Johnson, we found that if we can close uh, business on the first appointment. It saves us money. It makes us more efficient because we don't have to come back again. We can focus on uh, our salespeople can go to the next person. It saves us money. We're willing to give that money to you in the form of a discount of 7%, of 5%, of 9%, whatever it is. <laughs> and if you're willing to take advantage of that, then we can give you that discount that's good for today only. However, Mr. Johnson, if you don't feel comfortable with that, that's okay. The 90-day guaranteed price is still good. It's still our best price. But you do understand that we do have an efficiency involved with our sales process. And my experience is consistent that if presented properly, that will not create a, hey, I thought you said there was no pressure. In fact, it will do just the opposite. Where the person was normally feeling maybe a little pressured, they will now feel less pressured. Why? Because we've told them through our prepositioning that we don't pressure people. So when they see something that may be interpreted as pressure, their likelihood is that they will actually say, well, this must not be pressure because they don't do that. And they will be more likely to find your rationale for giving the first time discount to be more plausible, believable, and you'll actually get more credit. Now, if you go in there and you start doing three price drops, and you start sitting on their sofa for two and a half or three hours, and you start twisting their arm, and you start refusing to leave, you're just going to look like a jackass, which you probably are a jackass, and you deserve to be treated like a jackass. Now, I didn't say that to you, Jocelyn, because I'm sure that wasn't, that's not you, but that's how I feel about it. We've actually seen this to be extremely powerful in those situations, and the majority of our customers actually do offer that, what I call efficiency close, okay? Next question is, what is the increase in closing ratios using prepositioning? This is one that's like saying, what is the increase in in sales closing after going through uh, sales training? And the answer is, it completely varies. It's totally different across the board, depending on how bad you sucked before versus how good you are after. But the real issue is, how well do you actually execute and implement this stuff? How strong is your identity? Do you actually send the emails? Do you say, well, you know, we set our appointments quick, so we're just going to email everything. You don't actually send the package. Does the package actually go out? My experience is you can expect a healthy 2 to 3% in closing ratios. And when I say that, I mean raw numbers. I don't mean 2 to 3%. I mean from 30% to 36%. I mean from 22% to 25%. I've seen closing ratios go up by as much as 10%. But I don't tell people that because they say, well, I, I don't believe that. Well, I don't care if you believe it or not. Here's what you need to believe. This stuff works. If it was worth 1% or 2%, would it be worth it to do it? So hopefully it's not a cop-out kind of an answer, but the reality is. The truth is it really heavily depends on how well it's executed, okay? And it also heavily depends on how well you were doing before versus what you do after. It also has something to do with how well the competitors are doing in terms of their websites their, and, and their uh, abilities and so forth, okay? Next, how long does it typically take to complete a prepositioning package with MYM? We typically take about uh, three to four weeks to turn the identity around, and then we usually take it. The biggest slowdown on creating a contractor standards guide, believe it or not, is actually you. Uh, not you, Terry, but you, generally speaking, contractor, because as you look through that one that I gave you an example of, there's a tremendous amount of things that you've got to pull together to send over to us. We, we're going to put in your hands things like no pressure sales agreements, templates for bank and supplier letters, uh, job site cleanup rosters. You're going to have to get, get your insurance certificate and photos of your people and your, your uh, job site. All these things you've got to pull together. And that normally takes, realistically, honestly, it's about a couple months. Now, if you could just instantly pull that together, we can do the design turnaround on it within a week, but that's not realistic. What's realistic is a couple months. So realistically, if you signed up with us today, we're going to be looking at about uh, a month, roughly speaking, to get the identity. Meanwhile, we'll simultaneously start working on the contractor standards. We'll get the list in your hand within the first 48 hours of you doing business with us. And so you're looking at probably around 60 days. We've seen it take much longer for contractors that drag their heels pulling that stuff together. Hey, look, we know you're busy. We know things get bogged down. It happens. That's the answer. Okay. 
Next, are areas exclusive? Answer, no. Next, I have not seen any reports for our industry. Painting, suggestions. Uh, we actually, I think, have a painting report. We've done work in the painting industry. Uh, there's not nearly as many painters on these uh, webinars that we do, but we do have that available. And, and if we don't, we would just create it for you because we could surely use it for other painters in the future. So it's not something we would charge extra for. But here's what we do charge extra for. Our pre-positioning package, <coughs> excuse me, which I said you could pay $1,000 of the monopoly money we give you to, to buy. That's good for one product guide and one contractor standards guide. You only need one contractor standards guide no matter how many different products you sell. But if you sell siding and windows and painting and roofing, then those additional guides do cost additional money that the package includes for one product, okay? Next, um, on the emails you send out, uh, should there be links to the website or to place to get the brochures you talk about? Yes. I didn't show those. Those were sample emails. Yes, we would put the uh, we would put those on there. Absolutely. Good point. Thank you. Next, if selling is based on emotion, doesn't prepositioning steal some of the salesperson's thunder? Uh, that's what some of the sales trainers would like you to believe. But the reality is that we still can sell on emotion because take a look at the uh, take a look at the identities that I showed you in the uh, in the emails. Think about those for a minute. Those are emotional. Think about the uh, websites, and then there's a logical component. So here's what we want to have happen. For a sale to come together, we need emotion and logic to intersect. Some people will buy strictly off of emotion. Those are the people that tend to cancel their orders within three days, okay? Let's just be honest with you. Not always, but that's who does, does that. Here's your best customer, somebody that emotionally is involved and logically can justify the emotional desire that they have. And that's what the prepositioning is doing. So does it steal thunder of the uh, salesperson? The salesperson wants all of the thunder. That's what they're always going to say. In this, and you know what? I go head to head, toe to toe with some of the sales trainers, and they, they don't like this. But the reality is, let's think about this for a second. I know that you're normally selling in a competitive environment, and I've got to get a leg up before the other guy shows up. Not just before I show up but before the other sales guy shows up. If I just let everybody show up in the random order that they happen to show up and give their presentation, I may never even get a chance to sell. And guess what? You never sell anybody that you don't actually talk to. So I, I, don't, I think there's, it's an interesting discussion, but I don't think it's a valid point that it quote unquote steals the thunder from an emotional sale. I've seen it too many times where it has worked exactly as described. Okay, next. How much of the correspondence in scheduling for a website built by you guys is interactive and compatible with Market Sharp? How much of the correspondence? All of the correspondence is compatible with Market Sharp. Okay, that's not a problem. Website, uh, I don't really understand how the website would or would not be compatible with Market Sharp, but as far as I know, it's completely compatible. Uh, Richard, you asked that question. Maybe you could call our office and ask about that in more detail. Okay. Uh, may, you may have some specific component of market sharp that you're wondering about that I'm just not uh, putting that piece of the puzzle. Next, can my sales manager watch this webinar later? Yes, absolutely. Um, we will be posting this generally within 24 hours. So we'll send out an email on the back end that tells you when it's posted and you can watch that. Next, when you sign up, is the consultation personally signed to your account and how many con consultants do you have? Is a consultation personally signed to your account? I think you mean consultant. The answer is um, I do all the identities myself personally, so I'm going to sit down with you on the phone, and I'm going to go through your identity in a tremendous amount of detail. I'm going to write it up, and then I'm going to hand it over to my team to work on the other materials, prepositioning. We, we crank these things out all the time, the emails, the um, website content for the interior pages of your website. So it's a, it's a, it's a combination thing. Next. Uh, love it. Thank you, Jocelyn. I appreciate that. Next, what percentage of the market do you find are not using email or websites? Much of our target market is over 50, and how do you accommodate them? My experience is that people up to the age of 70 are frequently on the, the Internet in a very powerful, consistent, strong way. If you start getting into the 75, 80 crowd, then that's a, that's a difference. But also, those tend to be the people that are maybe have, if it's aging in place, there might be another person involved. But it doesn't matter. If, if, uh, if they don't have email access or Internet access, just send them the guide. They'll love it. You think that the old guy who's sitting around with no Internet is going to read the guide that you send? Are you kidding me? He's going to read every freaking word. Why? He's got nothing else to do. It's perfect. Next, 
is it an option to bring a package with you to the appointment if it is the same day or you don't get an email address? Absolutely. In fact, I would always leave it with the prospect as a leave behind, even if you don't get the sale, so that now they've got something to look at that's going to help make that case. Because if you just tell them stuff verbally like you normally do in your sales appointment, and then they try to remember it later, they're not, it's not going to be nearly as powerful. So yeah, absolutely. Next. Um, how much do the prepositioning packages cost to print, and how many pages are there? They could be anywhere from 8 to 24 pages, depending on, on how much you want to put in there. We have a standard template that's 20 pages, including the cover, so 16 plus cover. Um, they're going to cost anywhere from $0.80 cents to $4 each to print, depending on the quantity. That's, out, of course, outside of our control. That's based on printing. So that's something you might want to ask Dale Gorey in my office about. He's our printing guru. He will handle that for you. He's also the guru that will handle putting your contractor standards guide and product reports together for you. And the last question, <laughs> do you have one for waterproofing and foundation repair? And we do have one for waterproofing, foundation repair, I'm not sure. I think, I think yes. Do you print dollar value on your guide? No, we don't, but if you wanted us to do for some reason, we could do that. Okay, that's it. I've answered every single question. So I think we'll go ahead and end up now. You've got it on your screen what to do next, so go ahead and uh, and uh, request the consultation. And uh, you'll be hearing from uh, probably Brian Bauman, who's our Vice President of uh, Sales and Business Development, and he'll talk to you about your business, and he'll help you understand what we can do for you. He'll give you a consultation. If you end up not doing something with us, that's okay, too. He'll talk you through and give you some great ideas. So thanks so much for participating. Thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you to all the participants. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Columbus next month. We're going to be at a live seminar. So if you have a chance to come meet us, please do it. We'd love to see you. Talk to you later. Bye now. Oh, crap. What happened to the giveaways? Jay, you've got one. And Jared, you've got one. Who else wants one? Type something in. First, next two, we'll also get something. You're still there. Okay, Becca Johnson and uh, Jocelyn. That's it. Okay, you know what? Keep typing. We'll send you. Everybody who types something in right now, we'll send you. Uh, the first four, we'll send you something in the mail, like I promised. And everybody else, I'll send you uh, a link, okay, to some, some CDs that you can download. So I'm not, I'm not going to spend money on you, but I'll, I'll let you have the value for it. I'll send you a program called The Five Biggest Marketing Mistakes. It's two CDs long. We sell it normally for $99. It's a fantastic program, and uh, I'll send it to everybody that just said something, okay? Sorry, I, I'm so sorry. My brain is just not working today. Uh, I totally blew it on the giveaway. So those of you who uh, said something first, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take care of you. And hey, by the way, I see you on there, Laura. Good to see you on here. Uh, a lot of familiar names on here. Man. Okay. Thanks so much. I, I apologize for that oversight. That will not happen again. All right. I'm going to give uh, 20 more seconds for people that want to receive the download. And uh, we'll uh, then end the webinar. <laughs> oh, man. I'm such a nerd. I can't believe I did that. Okay, here's who the books are going to. Uh, Jay, you're going to get the CD set. Uh, Jared, Shell, you're going to get a book. Becca Johnson, you're going to get a book. And Jocelyn Dornfield, you're going to get a book. Everybody else is going to get a download. We'll send you a link, okay? Okay, that'll wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later.